Hello, Sawyer here. Welcome back to Real Numbers, the show that discovers math by investigating real-world problems. Last episode, we introduced expected value. Let's solve another problem about this probabilistic average. You are photographing your school's marching band during the Memorial Day Parade. There are 40 members of the band arranged in 10 rows of four. You are hoping to get a photo of a row of four band members all in perfect step, but you happen to know that the musicians each randomly decide to start marching on their left foot or their right foot at the beginning of the parade 50-50. What is the expected value of the number of in-step rows in the parade? And a bonus problem. What is the answer if instead exactly 20 of the students will start with their left foot and 20 will start with their right, but the band members are randomly arranged into the 10 rows of four? Submit your solutions with work shown on this page. Expected value is the probabilistic average of a random process. It gives the different outcomes of the random process averaged together, weighted by their probabilities of happening. One extremely useful property of this statistic is linearity. This means that the expected value respects addition of random variables and multiplication by a constant. The expected value of x plus y equals the expected value of x plus the expected value of y for any two random variables, x and y. And the expected value of a times x equals a times the expected value of x for any random variable x and constant a. This property allows the quick calculation of the expected value of some complicated distributions. For example, we computed last episode that the expected value of a single die roll is 3.5. This EV was easy to calculate because it was a uniform distribution over the numbers 1 to 6. But say we were rolling three dice simultaneously and adding them up and wanted to know the expected value of the sum. The probability distribution of this sum isn't going to be as simple. The outcomes range from 3 to 18 and will be somewhat peaked in the middle since there are more combinations of dice summing to 10 or 11 than there are summing to the extremal values of the distribution. However, we can represent this sum as x plus y plus z for three different single die rolls, and since linearity respects the sum of random variables, the expected value of x plus y plus z equals the expected value of x plus the expected value of y plus the expected value of z, so that's 3.5 plus 3.5 plus 3.5, or 10.5. So without calculating the specific probabilities of any given outcome of the sum of three dice, we know the expected value of the sum is 10.5. Try to use the linearity of expectation to simplify the calculation required for this episode's problem of the week. Now let's return to last week's problems. We were in a video game being attacked by a monster which was equally likely to be timid, aggressive, or deadly. Timid monsters deal 1 to 6 damage uniformly, aggressive monsters deal 1 to 12, and deadly monsters deal 1 to 20. For the first problem, we wanted to know the expected value of the monster's first attack. Let's start by using the definition of expected value directly. We know the expected value of the damage is equal to the sum from d equals 1 to 20 of d times the probability that the damage equals d. So we need to compute the probability of each amount of damage. For d equals 1 to 6, any of the three types of monsters can deal that amount of damage, so they all have the same probability. Taking d equals 1 as the example, the probability the damage is 1 can be broken up by monster type, timid, aggressive, and deadly, and summed since the monster types are disjoint. Then we can use conditional probability to compute each monster type's contribution to the probability, to get 1 tenth. So for each amount of damage 1 to 6, there is a 1 tenth probability it occurs. For the amounts of damage 7 to 12, we only need to consider the cases where the monster is aggressive or deadly. We again break it up to find that the total probability of 7 damage is 2 over 45. Lastly, for damage 13 and above, we know the monster has to be deadly. So the probability that the damage is 13 equals the probability that the monster is deadly times the probability that the damage is 13 given the monster is deadly, or 1 third times 1 over 20, or 1 over 60. So the expected value of the damage 
is the sum as d equals 1 to 20 of d times the probability of the damage equals d. That's the sum of the numbers 1 through 6 times 1 over 10, plus the sum of the numbers 7 through 12 times 2 over 45, plus the sum of the numbers 13 through 20 times 1 over 60. So all that simplifies down to 41 over 6, or 6.833333. There's a much more natural and less error-prone way to compute this expectation using linearity. Let's break up the damage done by our monster by difficulty class, so damage equals timid damage plus aggressive damage plus deadly damage, where for any particular monster, only one of these three will be non-zero. We know the expected value of timid damage is the one-third chance we are facing a timid monster times the sum of one-sixth times the numbers one through six, so one-third times seven over two, or seven over six. Similarly, the expected value of aggressive damage is one-third times one-twelfth times the sum of the numbers one through 12, so one-third times 13 over two, or 13 over six. And the EV of the deadly damage is seven over two. So by linearity of expectation, the expected value of the damage is seven over six plus 13 over six plus seven over two, or 41 over six, or 6.833333. Good to see the result was the same with this clearer way to group the arithmetic. We went on to ask the bonus question, if the monster's first attack deals four damage, what is the expected damage dealt by its second attack? A mathematically naive approach to this problem might argue, well, four damage is within the range of all the types of monsters, so we didn't learn what type of monster we are facing, and so the second attack will be the same expected value, 41 over six. However, that approach ignores the Bayesian update we can apply to our distribution on the type of monster we are facing. Let's apply Bayes' theorem to compute the conditional probabilities of the different types of monster given the first attack dealt four damage. We can reuse the absolute probability of being dealt four damage, one over 10, that we found in the laborious first solution to the problem of the week. Bayes' theorem gives that the probability of the monster being timid given the damage four attack is the probability of a damage four attack from a timid monster, one sixth, times the probability of meeting a timid monster, one-third, divided by the probability of a damage four attack, one-tenth, which comes to five over nine. Similarly, the probability of this monster is aggressive equals five over 18, and it is deadly with probability one over six. Checking quickly that five-ninths plus five-eighteenths plus one-sixth equals one, our new distribution still adds up to one, but the monster we are facing skews to be more likely timid and less likely deadly. This makes sense. The only amount of damage we've seen it deal was a measly four, which is evidence that it is a weaker monster. Consider the counterfactual case where the monster had dealt 16 damage on its first attack. That would be proof that it was a deadly monster since 100% of damage 16 attacks are done by deadly monsters. With damage four, all three types of monster are possible but the majority of damage four attacks are dealt by timid monsters because their damage distribution is concentrated between one and six. So with these updated probabilities, the expected value of the second attack's damage is the sum over the cases of the monster being timid, aggressive, or deadly, weighted by the probabilities just computed. So it's five ninths times seven halves, plus five over 18 times 13 halves, plus one sixth times 21 halves, or 11 halves, or 5.5. All right, that's enough fighting monsters in haunted forests. Let's photograph the marching band. What's the expected number of rows of the marching band that will be in step with themselves, given that the 40 musicians, organized in 10 rows of four, each independently start marching with their left or right foot? 50-50 chance. And what if instead we know 20 of the musicians start with their left foot and 20 start with their right, but they are randomly arranged into the 10 rows of four. Submit your answer or thoughts or comments you had about these problems, and I'll see you next week on Real Numbers.